this room are some one-of-a-kind models this is the home of Saga River Crew this is the one-of-a-kind uh, movie poster that was made back when the film was new in 1984 but I brought you here tonight to show you where the original Chris Prod Industries prototypes reside, at least some of them. Here, here's the Dornier Doe 335. That is the original prototype from 1991. And here's another, the Mitsubishi Ki-46. Again, the original prototype from which the kits were also produced. And here is the Kant Z1000 M7 Alcione Italian bomber with three propellers. And that is the original prototype model. And everyone likes the Avril Lancaster, 683 Avril Lancaster. That resides in this box. It had a crash landing way back in the day, and we're going to put her back together. You can see the parts are in here. And it's been in there. <laughs> it's been in there for over 20 years in, in the attic and in parts. We're going to put her together. Here's a little more light on the subject. Uh, all the parts of the Avro Lancaster, the uh, tail section with the rubber motor still attached to it and the tail wheel. And the fuselage here. Again, you'll recognize this from the photos that have been on eBay and other sites recently. This is a broken fuselage of the Avro Lancaster. There's the crank at the front that you would wind the prop with. We'll put these over here. Here is the uh, starboard wing and center wing. And you can see the pulleys on the two starboard nacelles. And there's the rest of it. There's um, one of the port nacelles, I guess the, the inner one. And there's the port wing. And again, the nacelle and the pulley. And then the other part of the fuselage is just this long strip of wood. And that should be it. Well, here's another little bit. We'll figure out where that goes as we go along. Well, what I've decided to do is that uh, we need a little more room to work, so we moved out to the kitchen under the uh, shade of my papaya trees. We're going to reassemble this uh, old wreck of the Avro 683 Lancaster Chris Prod Industries kit number QM-3. First, let's uh, make note that there's about 20 years worth of dust on all these parts. As you can see, uh, well, there's the bottom that was facing down, and there's the top. So these may, uh, this dust may sand off. Seems to be really in the grain of the balsa. I think they're going to have to be sanded or scrubbed off somehow. I'm finding that a uh, stiff kitchen vegetable scrub brush seems to be taking that dust off. So we're going to take a few minutes and do some of that cleaning. That's some real serious dust on this wing here. It's going to take a little while. Back in the 90s, the early 90s, 1990, 91, when I designed these, um, I recommended epoxy, uh, and you can see the old epoxy here, 
old uh, shiny fillets of epoxy, but I'm going to use regular old uh, super duper glue here uh, in the interest of time, which I don't use it very often, but this nacelle is weak, so we're going to just put a quick bead in here and get that stiffened up. And I'm not a big, uh, I don't have a lot of faith in super glue, but it will put it together real quick for this little video. video. Uh, as I said before, this is the prototype um, of the of the kit, and uh, is evidence of this is right here. I was obviously uh, working on the position of the nacelle, and there is an earlier uh, glue mark where the the nacelle was tried at this position. It was too far, and so it was, I had to break it and reposition it over here. A lot of it has to do with the uh, tension of the belts, and we tried to give as as much of a scale appearance as we can. We're going to um, glue the bulk, large bulk of the remaining old fuselage onto this central wing area here. Big fan of super glue people. <laughs> it's good enough for now. So there's your link. We'll turn it over now and see if we can meet up this broken piece of fuselage which formed the bottom. about it yeah we're gonna go through a whole tube of the darn stuff I think and we'll just put it all the way down here these uh, these plan planes had hand-drawn uh, detail on them by me at the time and instead of decals, they were paper insignia that were included on the plan sets. Reconstructing an old rack is a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Now here's a piece uh, here where the fuselage attaches to the bottom of the wing and there's a little brace and that's what this little piece was that I had found in the box. I wasn't sure what it was when I first found it, but that's going to go right here. If I can avoid gluing my fingers together as I've done already. Uh, put this in <laughs> as close as we can anyway. And the tail section, the dual tail of the Lancaster, still has the tail wheel, the little tail gunner made out of toothpicks, and the original rubber motor, over 20 years old, and this rubber is all had it. It's dry rotted. All of the prototypes, almost all of them, there's no rubber left, they dry rotted, so we're going to replace that with a new one. But we're going to now put the tail on right about here, I think. I'm going to have to I'm have to pause for station identification while I line this up before I glue it. Here goes the twin tail section onto the rear of the Lancaster uh, in test fitting before I hit the um, the uh, record button a moment ago. I tried this and there is a little a uh, splinter of wood that's gone forever that's <laughs> missing, but uh, it can be filled in with with uh, 
would fill it, I guess. It's, it's um, right up, right up here. But we're fitting the remainder of what we can on there, and it's going to be have to be held for, for a moment while it dries. Oop! I'll put it back. <laughs> Just finished attaching the twin tail section to the fuselage. It was a tough repair, and since there is couple of small chunks of wood that uh, frag fragmented w when it crashed and therefore it's not a real solid repair there it's a jagged edge where the where the two broken pieces were so there's going to have to be a little sandwich made here to make sure that that's going to hold and I'll take care of that I've placed a roll of masking tape under the wing there on the right side of your picture and as it turns out it gives me a nice equal footing so that we can set our dehedral and repair the remaining wing which is going to go right here. I'm about to repair the nacelle I'm going to have to put fillets of good old two-pot epoxy on all these joints because what I'm encountering is the uh, super duper glue there it's not doing as well as it should because all the things I'm gluing have the epoxy still on them at the old attaching point so instead of being able to get into the balsa grain it's, it's sort of putting super glue onto the old epoxy glue and it's not the old epoxy glue isn't as porous they seem to be weak these new glue jobs that I'm doing here so I'm gonna have to put fillets of the old good old epoxy over everything because I wouldn't be confident give putting that into the air like that but it's starting to finally take its shape old school two pot epoxy heavy but it will give us the strength we must have. My greatest concern is this wing repair right here. Super glue was not cutting it. So we're going to have to put a fillet on each side. And this is 10 minute epoxy. I might even need a brace. I don't know. We're going to have to see. This is just a quick restoration job, but if we were building this from scratch, then um, it would be a lot neater, I'm sure. So there's the entire Lancaster, all broken pieces assembled together. Uh, and we're going to wait a few minutes for the epoxy to dry. Well, some 15 minutes later, since we reapplied our 5-minute epoxy to some of the fillets to strengthen, uh, it's still a, just a little bit um, wobbly. We're going to wait a few minutes, and while we do, I'm going to go over a couple of the features of this model. Here is the uh, crank. Uh, which is used to wind the rubber motor and the crank passes to this main drive pulley and you can see the, the hook as I rotate which holds the uh, rubber motor and then the belts come to each nacelle there's the inner and then the outer nacelles 
these use ordinary aftermarket thrust bearings and propellers of a type I'm sure everyone recognizes but the pulley system was what made these unique and the kit does give you the parts that are necessary you can see a little white plastic tubing there and grommets uh, and these are measured very carefully to a close tolerance when you assemble them because if this isn't aligned right the belts are going to slip off so the inner nacelle has a twin grommet and then obviously the outer nacelle has only need for one grommet this system as designed obviously is not a endurance long flight model as there's no nose block as the real pros uh, like to use not not to say that it could not be modified uh, with a nose block system which uh, for those that are unfamiliar allows the uh, operator to put a longer rubber motor and, and stretch out the motor and get more winds etc I've actually never done that I was grown up as the amateur with the uh, without the nose blocks here is the plan set and the hardware package that comes with the uh, current short kit which has been seen on eBay recently we're about to open this packet so that we can borrow the rubber motor and the belts so that we can reinstall those on this old ancient well 20 21 year old prototype that we've just put snap back together Well, here's the rubber motor, and here are the rubber bands, which are the belts. Not just any rubber band would do. I had to search the country at the time back then to find the right rubber bands and the right rubber grommets and the right wire and the right plastic tubing, etc., etc., that would work in combination to make this system run. I've had to look back at my own instructions because these belts only work in one particular sequence and it's right here only one layout in it to make them work Now with all the belts attached, you can see the system, how it's going to operate once we add the rubber motor. And so now we crank the yank of the lank. Okay, for the first time in 21 years, Lancaster prototype powered up. That wasn't a full wind. Uh, I, I wanted to see how it performed. Some of the things you have to watch on these are the, um, the angle of the pulleys. I wanted to do that. That was a, a test about half wound. I also haven't oiled the uh, prop shafts yet, but that's it. That's your Chris Pratt Industries prototype Lancaster model. Put back together after being shattered 21 years ago. It was fun for me. Hope it was fun for you. Take care.